Meanwhile, say saluton, because today is Esperanto Day. Saluton means hello in Esperanto. It says here, 2,000 people will be speaking the language at a conference in Copenhagen. One man who won't be there is Ian Carter, though he learnt the language at the age of 16 in three months. I did, yes. So it's I, easy to learn Esperanto. It's it? ever so easy, yes. It's, um, it's very regular. Uh, you can instantly see what... Um, what part of speech words are like what's a noun, a name of something what's a describing word, what's a verb, a doing word just by looking at the ending of it and that, that is applicable across the whole language so there's no irregularities Is it like an easier version of Spanish or something like it that? It sounds like it because of the pure vowels so you get saluton uh, unless of course you're a, a British Esperantist and you say things like esperable <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is pretty horrible but you know Is it virtually dead? No, no, um, it's very uh, vibrant there's a website called lernu.net which has just celebrated 100,000 members so, I mean, it's far from dead. Um, but when people say, how many people are there in the world that speak it, um, how would you know? You know, how many people use Morse code or no Morse code? How many people speak Klingon? <laughs> well, but are you saying that not many do or many do without us knowing? I or? think there's varying degrees of, of uh, capability of speaking as well. There's some people who can just say salute on uh, and there's people who can do a whole dissertation uh, in Esperanto and, and everything in between. So how would you measure who's just a, a raw beginner and who's a real expert unless they belong to some kind of list? You've got the sense that it's actually growing in places like what? The, uh, Korea South Korea, South yeah. Why? There's a, um, I think the idealism uh, that's built into the language really appeals to a lot of people because it's a leveller. I was talking to one of your researchers earlier um, and if I go abroad, for example, and I insist on speaking English, then I'm immediately putting the other person at a disadvantage. And if I try to speak their language, then I'm at a disadvantage, and communication just goes down the toilet. So if you're both on at least the same kind of level, uh, you can make mistakes together, you can have a laugh about it, but you do tend to get the message across. Do you find, know anybody else in Chesterfield who speaks it? I met an oldish lady, better not say that, <laughs> um, called B, and I've forgotten her surname, uh, and she goes around and does talks about it, but there does seem to be a huge generation gap between the, the people who could really make use of it, young people, particularly in a gap year. Um, there's one girl I was reading about recently, she's been all around the world, and I think she's only paid for accommodation on three nights. Ah, oh, so the you speak a bit of Esperanto and you get a free well, there's, a, there's a thing called Passport a Servo, which is a passport service, and you let people know in advance that you're coming to their city, and more often than not, they will actually put you up for a night. There is an Esperanto... Place, street, yes. road, cul-de-sac in I've Sheffield. I've forgotten what it's called. I was there when they dedicated it back in the 70s, I think it was. Um, it goes nowhere. <laughs> Bit of a dead-end street, but Esperanza is not. It's Allen Square, isn't it? Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's around the back of um, a big, huge building. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody lives there, nobody walks there, nobody no. speaks Esperanto. I suppose people might doss there a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what will you do to celebrate Esperanto Day, Ian? Uh, I've been tweeting a little bit. Um, I would like people to just give it a try and not write it off as some kind of crank idea, um, because it's far from that. It's been persecuted all the way through its history. Um, socialists thought it was a fascist tool, fascists thought it was a communist tool. It's a language. You make of it what you want. Would you like to speak a little now? If you do it a little slowly people might understand do you think they would or not they might do if i say mi anomo estas ian carter his name is ian carter mi lojas en chesterfield well he lives in chesterfield kai mi estas brita instruisto with his brother an instrument maker <laughs> close i'm a british teacher <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, I'll say salute, salute on, and you'll say... Gis revido. Thanks, and have a lovely Esperanto day. Thank uh, you. In the company of Ian Carter, BBC Radio Sheffield.